All right, the Stiebel L-Tran and the solar pump calculations. Here we go. Remember, there are two types of systems. There's the open loop, which is known as a drain back in one particular case, and the closed loop. We're going to focus on the closed loop. Remember, Bernoulli's equation states that in a closed loop system, the pressure is going to be the same throughout. Because it's the same throughout, that's going to give us an optimal advantage over a drain back when it comes to sizing of the pump. The pressure is equal everywhere. The static head pressure will negate itself. So that's a critical component. When we measure pumps, we always determine head pump. And the pump head is going to tell us how many feet of lift that, that pump can do. There are four main criteria. The static pressure, head pressure, and velocity head. There are going to be some more critical ingredients within these. Let's go over these. Static head is just simply the height that that pump has to overcome. Pressure drop is also known as friction head. These are the insertable losses that is in the system that you have to account for. Valves, pipes, connectors, heat exchangers, the whole bit. Head pressure is the difference to move that fluid from one height to the other. So it's similar but not quite the same as static head. Static head is the pressure that it must overcome. So if you have a column of water statically there, that gravitational pull is going to hit us with the static head and the head pressure is then the force that we have to overcome to move that fluid from one height to the other. Velocity head is a less common problem in our applications, but generally in order to accelerate a fluid from stop to a feet per second, we lose PSI. A pump, as you know, will only produce a flow. We overcome a pressure, otherwise known as a head, or which is a foot, in order to get that fluid to go. So there's what we have there. To calculate loss, this is simply the calculatable head loss required to size the pump. We are not at this point calculating the system pressure. This is only the losses within the system to calculate for the pump. In a closed loop system, we only care about the frictional losses. In an open loop, you can see that we have all four ingredients, with the first three being the most important and that velocity is being ignored most of the time. All right, let's go to calculating the flow first. We need to know how much velocity and volume of flow to get that fluid through the collectors and back into the heat exchanger and back through and looped and looped and looped again. The very first criteria is what the manufactured data sheet is. Second thing is to determine how the SRCC flow rate it compares. And then if you don't want to go by that, you can go by the third equation, which is a simple gallons per minute pi square foot of collector. All right, so if I pull up the Stiebel L-Trans chart from their instruction guide, and I look and utilizing their Stiebel L-Trans Sol 25 and the Sol 27 Plus systems, they state that an optimal flow rate is going to be 1.3 gallons per minute. That is our optimal flow for for this system. Now, if I were to take 0.88 gallons per minute and multiply it by 2, that will tell me what the SREC value is. So 0.88 gallons per minute per collector. There are two collectors on our closed loop system. That would be a 1.76 gallons per minute. Let's say I had four collectors for example, and each collector was 27 square foot, that would be 27 square feet times the four collectors times a gallon per minute between the range of 0 0.025 and 0 0.075, a midpoint, chose as 0 0.04, that gives me about 4.2, 4.3 gallons per minute. And so you can see that we have a variety of figures. This is not a rocket scientist number, it is a rocket science value that we want to be close with. That's what we care about. We want to be equal to, but we don't need to go overboard. We just want to be in the ballpark, to be quite honest with you. Now, let's calculate how much loss that we have to overcome to get that fluid flowing. So if we use the Stiebel L-Trans system, we have 1.3 gallons per minute that we need to flow with. If we had our system that had the four, we have a little bit higher. Let's just make it, say, four gallons per minute. Well, how much losses are in there that that pump has to overcome? In a closed loop system, we don't have to worry about the height of the system because it's closed. It's pressurized. So we can actually use a much smaller pump to deliver the flow at, on a closed loop system as a drain back would require a much heavier duty system. Now there are some nice available materials out there. Copper.org has their copper uh, 
Pipe Handbook, and the uh, Engineering Toolbox has a nice website that I've linked here, giving us permission to view their data to calculate for fluid flows and head losses that we're going to account for. Now, just an offshoot here. How do we know what size of copper to run? Well, there's a couple things that we need to know about. A Copper comes into different wall sizes, a K, L, and M. If you remember K is king for the thickest and M is meager for the thinnest, that gives you an idea of which one's bigger and which one's smaller. L is usually the most typical sized wall copper pipe that we like to use. So we're going to go with the L type for our calculations and then we're going to have to know how much losses are involved for setting this up. If we were to do a spreadsheet, which we're going to show in the next video, these are the most important criteria to find for this. We are really trying to find a sweet spot. Sometimes we're going to have to make some subjective calls, and I'll show you how to do that. We need to make a very good value judgment for the length of copper on the run to the supply and to the return. We need to count all the valves couplers, elbows, pumps, anything else that's in the system that will create loss. Then we got to convert that into an equivalent distance. And then once we know that length, we got to convert it to a PSI loss. Unfortunately, pumps by the manufacturer give results that are in feet of head. So we'll convert our PSI into a head distance and then we will look at a chart to determine if that pump meets that criteria. So that's what we've got. So I pulled up a Stiebel Altran pump, this Wiley Star pump that is in the Stiebel Altran system. And so if I look at their flow rate, as again to mention, gallons per minute on the top and then pressure over here. So if we knew the worked example we're going to show was at 4 gallons a minute with a head pressure of 3.97 feet, I would go at 4 gallons a minute and then I say I need 4 gallons but I have to overcome 3, let's just round up to 4 foot. Well hey, I can do that. This green line is telling me at 4 gallons per minute and I need three, hey, this pump will be more than enough to handle it. So the Stiebel Eltran will work as low as the 1.3, which it was ideally cut for. So that's what we've got. And then again, I've got it listed for our Flowstar PDF that we've got permission from Stiebel Eltran to use. That's how we calculate the pump sizing. Now I'm going to just show you this. To calculate system pressure, that's going to be something entirely different. I'm going to cut that video next. That is not the system head pressures, but rather the pressure required to pressurize the system to make it work properly.